Greetings, you just heard the Marshall MG30 CFX. 30 tells you it's 30 watts, it's actually a 1 by 10 combo. CF tells you it's covered with this fine faux carbon fiber covering vinyl. And what does the X tell you? It has an analog signal path with digital effects and the digital memory, hence the name Digital Brain. It has four channels. Let's take a quick look. We see a light here that's green. Above this light it says Clean Crunch. Green is clean and it rhymes. Red is crunch and it doesn't rhyme. Next button, OD1 and OD2 above it. Red is OD2, green is OD1. So there are my four channels. So let's quickly go from left to right and explore the fine controls on this beautiful silver front panel. First and foremost, input. This is where you plug your guitar. Gain control. That's for the degree of dirt or gain on your crunch, OD1 and OD2 channels. And how loud, and then maybe a little bit of grit on your clean if you so wish. Then we've got three controls that every amp has, bass, middle, and treble. Next is reverb. This gives you a choice of two types of reverb, spring and studio. Spring is a good old fashioned spring reverb found in the good old amps of yesteryear. Studio would be emulation of a plate using digital technology. This has a, something called IPE, it's called Integrated Parameter Editing. What this basically is a smart way of saying there are, there are 264 presets of various reverb lengths and decays split throughout the two, studio and spring. So you basically dial, when you find something you like, you leave the dial where it is. So IPA once again, dial like leave, that simple. Next up is the volume control for the channel. So depending on what channel you're dialing in, that sets its volume relative to the other channels. Then next to it we have the effects control. It has a section for chorus, a section for flange, a section for phase, a section for delay, and very last, when you dial all the way clockwise, octave, it gives you a note, an octave below the one you're playing. When you get to the delay, you see this flashing light here? This is the tap tempo button. By tapping that, I can determine how quick or slow the delay is, relatively speaking, to the track I'm playing along with. And then last but by no means least, we have the master control. Once you've programmed all four channels, that predetermines the overall sound of the amp. This is the input for an MP3 player, so that's how I just played along with the backing track. I used my fine iPod, thank you Mr. Jobs. And next to it, a headphone output. And thanks to the headphone output, you can play along with the backing track using the MP3 input. Let me show you how easy this amp is to program. Let's go to clean. This is on the preset which has got chorus. That sounds pretty cool, but I want to put some more mids in there, so I'm going to dial the mids. And as you can see now, the green light has gone from solid to flashing. That's telling me I've changed something in the pre-program. I've changed the parameter. I'm going to change the reverb. Let's see. Yeah. Let's dial from chorus into phase. I'm in flange now, I kind of like that, it's kind of eerie sounding. To store that, I press, wait for it, the button marked store. Amazing labeling. I hold it for about a second. You'll notice that has stopped flashing. That tells me that that preset is now written in stone until I pre-program it again. You got me? So every time I go back to clean, that sound will always be there and you can do the same for all, all four channels. MG30, CFX 30 watt, one by 10, analog signal, digital effects, digital brain.